<laughs> so until now we heard the Baal Shem Tov's response and now the Baal is in the court of this great Rav that came to challenge the Baal Shem Tov. So this guest, this guest of the Baal Shem Tov, he leaned his head and he put his mind very deep to every word that left the mouth of the Baal Shem Tov as, as long as he was speaking. And he got up from his place and he went in the house this way and that way he was pacing deep in thought. thinking what to answer. Afterwards, he opened his mouth and said, not in part of your words, but in most of, for the most part, I could admit that they are words of reason, of substance. But what you said and you repeated and said, that even the empty prater are words of Torah. That the, even the Gentiles are messengers of the Makom of God, who is the place of the world, and the words are words of prophecy. They're not, not only words of Tamimus, they're not wholesome, straightforward, but they are words of heresy, actual heresy, God forbid. Because according to your words, even words of heresy and, uh, and foul words have supernal holiness that are imbued in them. And even in thoughts of sin and foreign thoughts, not, not improper thoughts, they are scattered in them sparks of the divine providence of the Shekhinah are scattered in them. And this is something that the intellect cannot stand, cannot bear. And the Torah can, cannot support such a stance in any way. And if there are people that are attached to such a to such a such a, an opinion, such a disgusting opinion, and the, they adhere to it, and they they're bound to such an opinion, they are going to be punished for this in the future. And I cannot accept it or approve of it in any way. That's what the Rav answered the Baal Shem Tov. So the Baal Shem Tov replied to this Rav. It's not a matter of your ability it's a matter of your desire. That's what it's contingent upon. You can, but you don't desire to connect to this approach.
It is in your ability to desire and to connect. Desire and you'll be able to. There's nothing that stands in the way of desire. For me to change my words, I don't want, I can't and I, and I don't want. And then I will put you correct. So the big rabbi that the guest answered back, no. To say that the words of a Gentile from the, from the market are the words of God, of the makom, of the place of God, in the form of prophecy and revelation, this is something that I cannot and I, I can't stand, I cannot accept them or approve of them. And the Baal Shem Tov replied, you can, you can, but you don't want, you don't desire to. And with these words, everything fell apart. So the Rav left this, this great rabbi that was the guest, left the house of the Baal Shem Tov, and he went on his way to return to his house and to his city. And while he was returning from the house of the Baal Shem Tov to his hotel, where he was staying, So he bumped into a Gentile that had been drawing a wagon full of stones that had overturned on the side. And the Gentile was standing and requesting, he was standing and trying all types of ways, schemes to set it up, to set it up straight, to stand it up, the wagon. So the Gentile called out, Jew! Jew, come close, come here to me and help me pick up this, this burden, this heavy weight for me. Quickly, come quickly with kindness. Do me this favor and stand, stand by my right side, stand by me to, to save me. I'm weak and And uh, my strength is waning. And the Rav replied to the Gentile, I can't. So the Gentile <laughs> replied to the Rav, You can, you can, but you don't want to. <laughs> if you want to, you can. <laughs> So this reply of the Gentile had a tremendous impact on the Rav. That he didn't know what to do. If he should exert himself more than he has the strength to. And to give over his strength to his desire in order to help this Gentile. Or to run to the Baal Shem Tov and, and tell him what just happened. And now we're running out of time. We're going to have to make another video. <laughs> <laughs>